Quakers um, were established, they didn't have any structure. And then um, partly because some people, because there were several groups moving around that um, were similar to Quakers, um, were, uh, but had slightly different ideas about how to deal with, with how to be, you know, um, religious. Uh, some of those groups were religious and some of them weren't. Um, the Quakers decided they needed to organize uh, to bring some authority into the, into the situation. And also, as is true of all humans, uh, there's, uh, there's a tendency to have some people who, um, who don't adhere to the scriptures. So I don't want to go into this too much, but anyhow, they, they decided that they had to organize into some, some kind of uh, an organization. And the organization that arose in England was one of local meetings um, and then quarterly meetings. And actually, they call them local meetings, not monthly meetings at this point. Um, and, uh, and then yearly meeting. And the quarterly meetings are regional, basically. Um, if you look at us, we have three quarters in um, South Central yearly meeting. Uh, it, it has to do with uh, meeting four times a year. None of our quarters meet four times a year. Um, one of them meets three times a year, and one of them meets twice a year, and one of them meets sometimes one time a year. So um, <laughs> we haven't been really good about that. And in particular, Cielo Grande, the quarter that we belong to, does not um, meet uh, um, regularly, which is a shame because it would be this, a smaller group of people that were distributed all over Texas. And it's, um, it's, the distances are large. And so it's almost like having to go to yearly meeting. Yeah. Can you say which monthly meetings are part of Cielo Grande, the one that we're part of? Um, sort of is. Dallas definitely is. Um, uh, we are. Hill Country is. Um, San Antonio, Corpus Christi. Um, really? uh, what do they call themselves? Coastal Band. Yeah. Pardon? Coastal Band. Um, Coastal Band. Band. Yeah. Coastal Band, right. That's right. Okay. And, and um, Georgetown. Well, and, and what was that? Georgetown. Georgetown. That's right. Uh, Lubbock and, and what is it out there by Fredericksburg? Uh, Kerrville. No, I country. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess Lubbock is part that they've never really been part of our quarter at all. Um, and, you know, I don't know that, I think there's a small meeting that's meeting in um, up in Caddo, which meets in, in, can't remember where, where the town is, in Texas. Not Texarkana, but the next one towards, if you're driving on 30, what is that meeting? What is that? Tyler Longview. Pardon? Tyler Longview. Tyler Longview. Yeah, Longview, yeah. So, um, but they're not, they haven't attended our quarter. So, um, so our quarter really is, is, has been kind of small. And you, you've been more involved than I have. Um, Howard. About what? About yeah, Howard. I think you got them all. Uh, there's a few that, uh, like you said, Fort Worth uh, it's never formally affiliated with Cielo Grande, but they get invited and they come. And uh, the uh, there used to be a, uh, a valley, Great Grand Valley meeting, which has been laid down. It's been laid down, yeah. So the the thing that's interesting is that Houston, which is the only meeting in Texas that's part of the Bible quarterly, um, uh, in some ways that's more that's appropriate because they're 
in some ways they're closer to New Orleans and, and that whole area um, than, they, than they are to us. But um, it's kind of interesting because the only Texas meeting that is in the quarter. Anyway, I don't want to take too much time with this, but then there's Archie um <laughs> which is uh, Arkansas, um, uh, Oklahoma quarterly meeting. And they meet regularly um, three times between yearly meetings, which is really nice because they, but they're also so isolated. Um, they, they're, they're, their meetings feel very isolated. So they really need that, you know, they're small, tiny meetings and they feel very isolated. So they really need that, that connection. Because we have San Antonio and Austin, um, both of which are larger meetings, um, I think we don't feel that need that, that others do um, for that intermediate group. Um, on the other hand, we do feel a need for a yearly meeting. Um, now, authority lays in the hands of the, um, and always does, of the, uh, of the monthly meeting, which means that we really do make our own decisions at, at our business meetings. But we have the advice that comes from our, um, turn up my phone, uh, the, the advice that comes from our, um, our uh, yearly meeting faith and practice. And one of the things that happened at yearly meeting this year is we were introduced to our first and only first draft of the faith and practice for South Central yearly meeting. Our meetings have been using different faith and practices from other yearly meetings. So it's going to be interesting to see that process. And that's one of the things that um, we, we need to deal with is a, as a monthly meeting. Uh, we need to be bringing up pieces of that in business meeting and perhaps discussing it in, in forums because um, there's, there, I haven't read it yet. I don't know if anybody has. Um, but it's all online and we can download it and print it and things like that. So, um, so, and the group has been working really hard on it. So the, but the yearly meeting event itself um, happens once a year. Uh, we also have a, uh, like an interim, which is called representative meeting in the fall uh, that happens. That representative meeting is really all about planning the yearly meeting session too. And a little bit of a check-in we hear from each of the um, month, uh, each of, uh, quarterly meetings and sometimes some of the monthly meetings. Um, and we can do some adjustment to our nominating um, to the people who are serving the yearly meeting. But we're really not supposed to approve budgets or make any of those adjustments at representative meeting. There's a, and it, also, online, you can get to a procedures manual for yearly meeting. The, a lot of the procedures manual will go into the faith and practice eventually. Um, but the procedures, those are the procedures of the yearly meeting, which always will be, I think they'll always be separate. I'm not sure how that, they're going to do that. So, um, but yearly meeting to me, as I, as I started talking about it, is a meeting of the family um, of the larger. I don't. I don't have a large um, extended family. I did when I was growing up, but I don't anymore. Um, they, they, my, you know, the tendency in the twentieth century was to have only a couple of kids, not a lot, not you know, the five kids that were part of my uh, my grandparents' um, families. Um, but uh, so. But this is like the the big the big family reunion every year, and we get to see people who um, see children who are growing up in in Arkansas and growing up in in Oklahoma and things that we've started to see. So there's, there's a meaning for me in yearly meeting in seeing a pair of twins who were really little the last time I saw them, especially because of the um, uh, the COVID, uh, um, that, that are really, that, you know, they're really, they're, they're 12 or 13 now, and they're really tall little guys. So 
um, that has an effect. And also it's a time to get together and reaffirm our uh, way of worship. And uh, some of the worship for me was quite deep this year to celebrate the lives of people who passed on, um, who died during the year to celebrate the births of the children that come into the yearly meeting during the year and to generally, um, you know, celebrate the family and how it's growing and prospering. Um, it's also a time to hear somebody, usually we have a keynote, hear somebody who's an inspirational person and certainly the fellow who did that this year, Greg Casales was definitely that and to have small worship groups um, and to have workshops. Um, uh, the dying tricks and to, you know, to see the kids running after the Easter eggs to retrieve them and, you know, but you can't do everything at yearly meeting. And then of course, the Saturday night variety show is always a key piece for us. Um, so, uh, these days we get to record it all, so you can even go back and see it. Some of you who weren't there see it. So um, with that, I'm just going to stop, and I'm going to ask what the experience was this year of yearly meeting for each of us. Um, and uh, that was there, that is. Um, and, you know, uh, um, I guess I, I, I hope that that meets Aries <laughs> reason for having this uh, this time yeah. So I guess we'll just you know you know what James you want to start it was your, it was your second yearly meeting it was the, yes the second one I've attended yeah. um, so the one prior was uh, always uh, back I think maybe 2016 was the last time um, I'd attended and um, I had really, yeah, a really wonderful experience of this year. Um, uh, for one thing, uh, just uh, I camped outside and it's just so beautiful outside there. Um, there is right on the outskirts of the camp this um, massive field of blue bonnets um, that just stretches on. And I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, it's just this whole sort of field of blue flowers and just everything. It's such a beautiful time of year with all the little, little flowers coming up everywhere. Um, and so, yeah, it was very uh, peaceful to just uh, be outside and to uh, um, see those things. Um, I also had, a, um, I think, a much better time this year. Um, uh, it was nice to connect to friends um, of sort of all different ages uh, from all over the yearly meeting. Um, and I felt like there was a good uh, mix this year of people, um, sort of kids, older friends, sort of middle-aged, younger friends, all these uh, groups were there um, and, um, yeah, created a sort of diversity of experience um, and um, sort of more connection, I felt. Um, what else? I think probably the most meaningful part for me was the uh, worship sharing um, that happened. Um, I, I think that I'd only, I was only able to go on Friday evening and stay through Saturday, and then I, I left on Sunday. Um, so I was only able to go to one of the worship sharing sessions, but that was really a wonderful, very powerful thing. Um, and I think something um, I just, I'd like to do more often. Um, Sit there and worthwhile well saying it was, yeah, it's generally like we could. Uh, I, I, my one, I feel like we maybe got a little bit over ambitious in the business meeting in terms of the number of things we were trying to handle. So, those were like, uh, so the worship felt so meaningful that we ended up actually not having any worship on Sunday, really, since uh, we just uh, got a little backlogged on everything. So, um, that's that's the sort of one, one downside of that, but otherwise, it was just a really beautiful place and lovely, lovely to have those connections. Someone else? Well, I, I remember uh, the thing that stands out most to me uh, for South Central Yearly Meetings uh, gathering this time was that I inspected over a hundred bed frames and <laughs> restored the integrity to about two dozen of them. 
uh, yeah, there were about two dozen that were in danger of collapsing. Uh -huh. Thank uh, you. Yes. <laughs> I, I put up uh, over a hundred signs throughout the, the uh, place. Uh, I figured out where all the rooms were in the, uh, what's the big hall with the really meet for worship? Uh, I forgot the name of it. Anyway, I put up uh, Admin Theater. Admin, okay. And uh, put up a bunch of signs there uh, and found out where the rooms were that they went to. Um, there were no uh, smoke alarms out of commission this time, which uh, I thought was amazing, given that there are probably dozens of them all over the campus. Um, that's, what, that's pretty much what stands out to me. For, for well, why, Larry, were you doing all that work? Uh, I am beginning to wonder. Uh, <laughs> have you taken on a specific role? Like, I, was right. the, I was the assistant site coordinator. <laughs> And now next year you'll be site coordinator, right? Yeah. So one doesn't normally, I mean, that would not be a normal uh, 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 role that you would play for more than two years. You'd be assistant and then you would be site coordinator and then then somebody else would take over for you. So um, it's, a, it's a unique way to go to your union. I found uh, Greg Casillas. Uh, keynote address and the time in the fireside chat. Both very inspiring, very inspirational. I didn't write down the title or anything, but I wrote down some bits and pieces. If I am not changed, how can I change others? Oh, and the bit, what he did in his introduction, you know, I have a husband, I have this many dogs, I have this many cats, and I have 150 children at the uh, facility where I work. Is those of us who did get to yearly meeting are talking about our experience this year. Experience was um, pretty much different than <laughs> those experiences. I didn't go to the keynote because I was busy with um, young people and a few adults working on a singing tree project, um, hanging, painting, having to do with the theme of the yearly meeting, which was spiritual nourishment or spiritual refreshment for the long haul. So um, everybody at the yearly meeting, just like everybody here, monthly meeting, um, when we did ours, was invited to color leaves, birds, stars, um, with different meanings, like the stars stood for somebody who gave you spiritual refreshment, past or present for the long haul, and the birds were what would you like to have come into your life and the leaves for nourishment, refreshment that you already have. Um, anyway, it was, it was um, what I did most of the time that I was there was work on that and, um, uh, and for the week ahead of it. And um, so I didn't get to many grown up activities, i.e. business meetings, but I did get to one and it was good. Um, I did, I guess give my read out loud whatever it was that I read for um, the two things that I'm part of representing Austin Tan Serka. I'm not a representative, I'm a whatever you call it. I, I connect with Austin Tan Serka and report annually to yearly meeting at this point. Somebody else will do it in the future. You are the representative. Is that what I am a representative? Okay. Okay. Um, and um, so I talked about Austin Tan Serka and in business meeting, and then I also talked about, um, and now I'm getting nervous, so I'm forgetting everything, right? Um, Impact. Impact, right? Thank you. Texas Impact. Andrea Bean and I are South Central Yearly Meeting 
reps to Texas Impact, and it has been a much more active involvement this go round than previously. So it was a very different report and will be a different report next time. Um, so, um, and I, I've got to my comfort zone and get, um, hold jokes during the family fun night, which I've never done before. <laughs> and um, it was gratifying because people laughed. <laughs> Good tell a joke, it's nice if people laugh. And um, I did a little bit of play with the little kids, but the um, schedule was such that the big kids didn't get to come, which was kind of disappointing to me. But one of the things that was really cool about working on the mural slash collage was that I got to know the kids better. And as Liz said, these two twin boys who used to be, you know, four or five, six year olds running all over the place. You know, now they are like fine, upright young men. Um, very awesome. I mean, I, I gave the father a whole lot of compliments and I think the mother too, I can't remember exactly, but um, it's, it's so nice to see when, um, you know, wild children turn into fine upright people. <laughs> um, yeah, and I was able to, this was important to me to connect with Danielle Evans, who lost her husband during the past year, Gerald Jimmy, and um, give her some personal support, which was important to me. So all that, plus somebody else did the cooking, somebody else did the dishes, dishes and we all got to eat together and enjoy each other's company. So different people have different experiences at yearly meeting. Yeah, but one of the things you pointed out that I think I didn't make clear is one of the main reasons that our yearly meeting got together is because we are one of the first yearly meetings outside of the East Coast area to, to get together. And when they did get together as a Southwest conference, they realized they wanted to be a yearly meeting because they wanted to send people to those groups in Philadelphia that were controlling the Society of Friends, you know, um, and doing good work to AFSC and FCNL and those groups, and that they couldn't do that from their monthly meetings. They could only do it from a yearly meeting, the way those groups are set up. And so they, they intentionally, when the history of the yearly meeting, interestingly, they made a real point of the fact that they were not just sending those people to bring back the news from Philadelphia, but they were sending those people to, um, to affect what happened in Philadelphia, um, because obviously those people were very ignorant about what was needed in, in Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas and, and uh, Louisiana. And so uh, I think that's an interesting part of why our yearly meeting came, originally came together. Um, and so, you know, we send people to FCNL, we send people to AFSC, we send people to Friends World Committee, which is an international group of Quakers, and, and also to other groups like QE, Quaker Earth Care Witness, and um, Friends Peace Teams, which actually are came out, out of our yearly, part of it came out of our yearly meeting. I mean, um, the whole Latin America part started with our monthly meeting and our yearly meeting, really. Um, and so that, I just want to highlight that we wouldn't have that as a meeting um, and be hearing about those things if it were for the yearly meeting, have that representation. So there's two people with the yearly meeting back there. What? <laughs> well, I'm asking people to talk about their experience. Yeah. I said the registration table. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's my experience. That's an important thing like you work. Well, the main important thing about yearly meeting is it gives you a sense of community with Quakers around the region. 
They're people now we've been old friends for years and years, and I know through you and me, and, uh, you know, not being one to pop around the four-state area to different monthly meetings, I wouldn't know them otherwise. And uh, so that's mostly what I get on a yearly meeting. And um, Warren have uh, made clear to us there are roles in the yearly meeting that um, at, on site that um, beyond being representatives, we can also be uh, people who actually run the yearly meeting because we don't hire anybody to run the conference. Um, so, you know, I have a role of doing things on the web the help out the stuff. Um, Warren and Terry are real involved in the uh, registration, um, but the registrar actually was your assistant registrar again, right, Warren? Or? No, we're co-registrars. And I, think I, wouldn't use, I wouldn't use the verb run. We facilitate. Run to me means we're in charge. We're not. We're servants of the yearly meeting. So we facilitate the right. yearly meeting. We, we definitely... Even though some people may think we run it, we don't feel we run it. We we feel like we make it make it a possibility for people to be there. And family fun night is a high point of the early meeting, which I always enjoy because I have people rocking and rolling and smiling and singing and standing their feet. And I like that. I will say that there is another group that you have not mentioned. Kind of in the background that we we couldn't possibly have yearly meeting without, and that's the yearly meeting planning committee, and they basically are working year long. You know, they work with the quarterly meeting in charge of the uh, adult program, but then you know they're responsible for all aspects of pulling it all together, you know, creating the schedule, working with the youth program, working with the adult program, trying to make the space of the band, working with the registrars and, and the on-site coordinators to make the event happen. So the yearly meeting planning committee, I, I think, is one of the most important groups within the yearly meeting that no one really knows much about. And you're always welcome to join that group. I was just going to say, unless you serve on it, which you do by being by having certain um, a, appointments to, and also there are at large members. Most, so, most of the committee is at large. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and that's another confusion that people get is that the event is not the yearly meeting. The early meeting puts on a one-time annual event. And the one-time annual event also serves as their, you know, like their corporate meeting. Um, we approve a budget and we do the kinds of things, point, point, you know, we don't appoint a board, we appoint a whole bunch of people to run the, uh, those things. So uh, that's, you know, that, that happens at the yearly meeting, but at the event, but it's kind of huge. Funny, so we don't talk about it as we talk about it as going to yearly meeting, but um, but we it's really the annual session we're going to, um, and that that can get very confusing for people. So uh, my experience of yearly meeting was, you know, it's, it's not like we're talking about all these people feeling the elephant, you know, and giving a different experience. Uh, I, I wasn't involved in a lot of the uh, activities. Uh, I missed the keynote. I, uh, I was in one business meeting session, and I, uh, which I thought was very good. Um, and I did get to two workshops. Uh, most of my weekend was uh, with the kids. And uh, I'm uh, just getting active now as a member of the uh, Youth Program Support Committee. So... Uh, we coordinated a lot of uh, volunteers. Uh, we wanted to follow uh, a child safety protocol of having at least two unrelated adults with kids at all times. And uh, we were 
successful in doing that, I think. Um, and it was really, really great to be with the kids. Uh, the committee is uh, really looking for people who can actively participate. So if you're an all led uh, youth program support, the committee would be looking for people. And I, I'm going to mention somebody who's in this room who probably would say that she didn't come to the early meeting, and that's Erica. But Erica, uh, you know, she had a she had a family medical, uh, you know, concern that uh, kept her from actually attending the early meeting. But she traveled to Green Family Campground twice just to bring all the materials for the kids' programs, both at the beginning and at the end. So I just I just wanted to mention that, even though she didn't get to attend anything else. Um, and uh, also, just to mention, though, there were activities that happened virtually before Thursday. And uh, we, we had a business meeting session, we had our opening worship, and we had two workshops. And uh, one, one of the workshops was, uh, in fact, Joanna uh, introducing the concept of uh, singing tree to everybody. I have not really gotten into yearly meeting that last week starts online. I like business meetings. I attend business meetings when I'm at yearly meeting unless I'm utterly involved in something else. But I don't know if we've made a long-term decision that there's not enough time to do everything during Thursday through Friday, or whether this is still in the works. If it's in the works, I suppose I'll get used to it. Well, okay, I should say something about business meeting and yearly meeting. I always find business meeting and yearly meeting really a wonderful example of business meeting. And that's the clerk's I mean, I'm saying this about myself and several other people who are in the room, but the clerks, the nearly meeting clerks are generally really seasoned people um, who, uh, who really, you know, know how to clerk. And it's one place you can go to do that. And the people who are sitting in the room contribute to that by being experienced Quakers. Um, and business meeting is one of my favorite parts of yearly meeting. So, um, we had one business meeting online, and it was a really good one. It, w it really was centered in all of that. So I think the practice of doing that means that we can get her out of the way some things that, that, you know, there just isn't enough time in a weekend. There really isn't to do a whole year's business. So um, I think that this, whether we'll continue that. But then there, I didn't, I went to the worship. The all yearly worship. I went to the Peace and Justice Forum that happened online on Sunday afternoon, but I did not get to the. Uh, I, and I went to the, but I didn't go to the workshops because it just was too much for me um, that week. I had something else that evening, so. But I think it was worth doing. It's worth doing it that way. But I think you should reflect that to the yearly meeting planning committee. Um, uh, but those evenings of preparation, I did. Did there, did other people participate in those evenings of pre preparation? I'm not sure they did. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, Warren, did you go to any of those? You're talking about before the resolution. We start on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's something that we need to think about. I mean, and that's why you know I like the fact that we're sharing it because it'll help. It'll help us. Is there anything that anybody um, who wasn't at yearly meeting wants to say or talk about or ask about? I haven't heard about the music or the puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's a lot of people who come to do music and puzzles. 
um, in the dining room, which has been a tradition. Uh, it wasn't as big a group this year as it sometimes. It's mainly an Austin group, I heard. Yeah, it's true. All right, when I heard. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure why that was, except it was a smaller group in your own meeting. Maybe still uh, with COVID, people are a little nervous about seeking any group. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's usually quite a wide circle of people singing alone, song books, and that sort of thing. This year, not so much, but maybe it'll come back next year. Would it be okay if I passed around this card for Mitch Richardson, whose yes. wife was in the hospital yes. while we were at the early meeting? and? We sent a card from yearly meeting to her and to a lot of people, but she has since died. Betty. Betty Richardson died. Yeah. So this is just a condolence card. Is that a to you, Howard? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's been on the website. It's been on the page. So if it's okay, I'm just going to pass it around. Even if you didn't know her, you can just sign your name. Mitch and Betty attended yearly meeting and held different positions for years and they you know betty died of, died just after the yearly meeting i guess i can't tell you what date it was i'd have to look it up I've, <laughs> you know i've been going to south central yearly meeting for about for more than 20 years and I can tell you that a lot of the people who were there when I first started are not with us anymore. And uh, that's kind of sad. Um, I mean, you know, some of them moved away, but some of them have, you know, are deceased. And the, you know, we have videos of the original founders of the yearly meeting talking about um, their lives as Quakers and and things. And it's really quite fascinating because, you know, being out here as a Quaker in even in Austin, I uh, in the nineteen forties and fifties and sixties was uh, an interesting experience. But kind of a lonely experience for the most part. So getting together for the early meeting is really important. Comments? Um, some people might not realize that when we sit here in our meeting room and answer questions for the state of the meeting report for a couple of um, times, a couple of forum times before yearly meeting that everybody all over Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana is doing that in Quaker meetings and then compiling this state of the meeting report, which um, is very interesting to see what different meetings come up with and that also is on the www.scym.org website, right? Um, the, the state of the meeting, the state of the yearly meeting is up there. The monthly meeting uh, um, reports have not gotten up there yet, uh, but they will be eventually. So, yeah. What's the goal of the yearly meeting? What's the goal of the yearly meeting? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, somebody else? Well, right. There are two questions in there. What's what's the goal of the yearly meeting as an association, or what's the goal of yearly meeting as in the annual sessions where we gather, be in community and transact business? So, I mean, those are two different things. So, I guess the question is, what do you mean by going to yearly meeting? The group, the organization? or the event uh, gathering together for our annual session? You came in a little bit late. I think Liz pointed out 
opening comments that the yearly meeting organized as a yearly meeting in the 40s, 50s. Well, in the 50s, they, they were they were just the association. I'm not sure exactly when we actually formally gathered at Young. 61. Okay. But that, but that was to be able to send represent, you know, to, to be a corporate entity uh, and be able to send representatives from our area to break groups uh, so we could represent who we who represent our area. But it's also, um, you know, giving structure to the monthly quarterly meetings with, within our, our yearly meeting. The, the, the yearly meeting session really is a chance for us to get together for community, but also to do the business of the yearly meeting. And the business of the yearly meeting can take on various things. There's the reports from our representatives and from our constituent monthly groups. There is, of course, our fiscal responsibilities, our budget. They're naming those individuals who will be in service to our yearly meeting for the next year or two. Uh, and a big portion of it is uh, social outreach. I mean, you know, what's important to us as, as Quakers in the Peace and Justice Forums? People come from much smaller meetings than we do, as in three people get together and it's a Quaker meeting. And the enrichment of numbers, which I feel even from a big meeting, and the enrichment of that many points of view, that, that many things you have to choose from for what you can do, is the value to the individuals attending. Sorry, Terry. Uh, this is an official goal of the yearly meeting, but to me the most important uh, mission is creating a sort of a community fabric between Quakers and local meetings and Quaker, Quakers worldwide. We had our monthly, monthly meetings and uh, worship groups around this four state area use the yearly meeting to get to know each other, to do some work in common, and then to appoint representatives to uh, organizations in the entire world of Quakers. So, so there's all, all these channels of communication that are going on between friends, and yearly meetings are sort of at the center of that web of Quakerism around the world. It allows us to represent ourselves to these wider groups, and it also allows us the opportunity to learn what these wider groups are doing and how they can assist in the programs. One of the traditional activities of all year in meetings is the reading of epistles uh, from other year in meetings and writing them in ourselves. And so at a typical yearly meeting, you'll have a random number of messages from friends in, I mean, in New Zealand, in London, Hong Kong, and, and uh, that sense of what Quakers are doing everywhere really builds uh, uh, that sense among ourselves that we're part of something bigger. I'm glad you said that, Terry, because Liz, that's another thing that I would like to add. You were talking about how do we represent the yearly meeting session to those individuals who are not present for the event. I would really encourage all of you to go to the SCLA website and click on the link for the yearly meeting of this. It's up there now. Oh, yeah, it is definitely up there, yeah. We had a wonderful epistle group again this year. And I think that the epistle that they wrote to capture our time together was really a very good representation. And so if you want to know what your meeting was like this year, read the epistle. It's, it's a wonderful document.
in my in my number of ten years. It's time for us to close with a couple of minutes of silent worship and then go into meetings.